Hi everyone, this is Professor Dan Hauer again, and I would really stress the importance of listening to this video lecture because what you are about to hear in the next 10 to 15 minutes is all of what you will need to know in order to complete this course successfully. So, um, and this is the main project of English Composition 1, so please take notes if you feel it is necessary to do so. So, let's begin. So, what are the four C's? Your integrated research essay is one final product, which is broken into four sections, context, comparison, consequences, and compromise. So, we will be writing one section at a time. You will not be writing the entire IRE in one big draft. We're going to do one section at a time and we will begin with context and then move on to comparison, consequence, and compromise. And each section has its own purpose and objective. So this is how it works. The integrated research essay, as I just mentioned, is the major assignment in English 110. It is a focused semester long project with the end goal of, of combining those four contexts, I'm sorry, those four essay sections into one cohesive research project. It will begin with the context, which is an overview of the issue and the conflict. It states the background and it sets the foundation and the stage of why this issue, the what it is. Then after that, we will move to the comparison of the positions and supports. I will go more into depth than that in a minute. And then the third essay or the essay essay section, excuse me, is the consequences of each position. And then the fourth and final essay section is a middle ground or compromise, if possible, between the two sides of the issue. So you will be choosing your topic in week two from an approved list by me, which will also come from the PBS station frontline. Each section of the paper will require the use of assigned sources from the library database, organizational or government websites, and even Google Scholar if you feel necessary to do so. In addition to that, you will learn how to format and cite sources using MLA 8 style documentation. So other components, for each section of the IRE, you will do the following. You will engage with the reading that demonstrates the style of writing for this section, complete a research exercise that helps you to gather appropriate information for each section. Using the English 110 Library Guide, you will draft the essay and have the essay peer and instructor reviewed, and then you will write a final or graded draft of each section. So keep this in mind that when you write your first draft of an essay section, that should not be your final draft. After you have your peer and instructor review session, you should go back to that original draft and revise it again for, for then you would submit to the final IRE. So let's talk about each section and we will begin with the context section. So we, as our course, only goes for 12 weeks, so I have to compact some things quite quickly. And we will begin in week two, your context section. So as I mentioned in another video, the purpose of the context section is to understand the foundation, the history of the issue, and why it is what it is today. So the context for me, I think is one of the most important essay sections of the IRE because if you can't set the foundation, then you're not going to be able to build a strong argument later. So here it says the context, the set of circumstances or facts that surround a particular event or situation. So in your context essay draft, you want to answer what information or background do readers need in order to understand the conflict or issue? 
What are the two main sides? What is the current status? Why is this being talked about now? What is the history of the issue? What is the timeline? What and who are the major sides in the conflict? So think about it this way. You're answering the five reporter questions, the who, what, where, when, how, and why. Section two is your comparison of arguments. And I would like to stress here that when you are giving information on both sides of the topic, you should act like as if you are a reporter. You have to remain objective. You cannot have any bias in this section whatsoever. So the purpose of the comparison section is to answer what are the points of agreement? What are the points of disagreement between the two sides? Which side offers better evidence to support its position? I would be mindful with that, that you can talk about this, but you have to be objective as if you are a reporter. And then comparison, examining the two sides and similarities, um, similarities and differences, excuse me. Okay, so, and then the argument, the process of reasoning, series of reasons presented in support of a position. So section three is consequences. I also like to call this section your argument section because in the previous section of comparison, as a reporter, you were giving both sides of the argument saying this is how side A sees it and this is how side B sees it. Now in this section of the consequence, you can pick a side and you can argue and say this is why side A is better than side B. And you have to present reasons and evidence to support your claim that side A is better than side B. So questions to answer in this consequence essay section. What are the consequences if either side prevails? What happens if there is no resolution? And then consequences, the effect, the result, the outcome of something occurring earlier. That's a definition of that. And then you want to be aware that correlation is not causation. So to explain that a little bit more, think about it this way. A and B are consequences of a common cause, but they do not cause each other. So for example, you can have uh, the more firemen that are sent to a fire, the more damage there is, or the more damage can be done. Another example is uh, students who get tutored get worse grades than children who don't get tutored. They A and B in these two situations do not affect each other. Okay, so one thing I do love about the consequence section is that this is the one section that you can be most persuasive in. Okay, so the way that you would relay your key points, you want to be strategic about that because you want to grab, you want to be persuasive in, in the most way possible. So you really have to think how you can relay that information in a way that is most effective and gets people to understand you, your stance and why it is correct over the other side. So the final section is compromise. So compromise is a settlement of differences by mutual concession, an agreement reached by adjustment of conflicting or opposing claims, principles, etc. So the questions to answer in this compromise section, how and where can these two sites meet to move past the point of conflict? What are the possible solutions? Mind you, this is not similar to the question that was posed in the, in the consequence section of a resolution. You, in the, res, in, the, in the consequence section, you're arguing a stance, okay? And so that is different. Here, in this section, you're addressing the issue, what happens if they can't be resolved? And what, how can these two groups come together? for a possible solution. What is a recommendation? What is what is the issue going forward? You want to think to the future and you want to conclude as well. So, 
So I would also like you to think at this point, think of the IRE as like a train. The first section is your introduction. You are setting the stage for what is to come. You're giving the history, you're giving the background, you're saying this is why the issue is here, here are all the stakeholders, this is where it's happening, then that is your introduction. Then you move on to the second section and that's like your first body paragraph. You do not need to go back and giving the introduction all over again because you've already done that in the context section. So before I go any further, section one, the length should be three to four pages. And the required sources, credo, points of view, reference, and one organizational website. In section two, the content is a little bit longer, four to five pages. Databases you will use. CQ Researcher, a newspaper source, and an additional resource. I would also like to see one book, it doesn't matter which section, but I would like to see one physical book as a source in one section of your integrated research essay. So again, section one is like your introduction, section two is a body paragraph. Think about it that way. Then we move on to section three and four. Section three is your consequences. It should be three to four pages. The databases you will use, you can use Academic Search Premier, Google Scholar, and a credible website. That would be like a governmental website, EDU, anything like that. Wikipedia is not an acceptable database by any means, or even a website, okay? And again, section three would be like another body paragraph. Now section four, the compromise, is like your conclusion. You're ending the train, you've come to the stop, and now you have to conclude and you have to remind your reader of everything, okay? So this section, the compromise section, it will be at least two pages, and you can have that, um, sources from ProQuest Central, or a new credible source as needed, okay? So again, each section, section one is your introduction, section two, section three is like a body paragraph, and section four is like your conclusion. So integrating the sections, this is how it would look. You need to function for a section one, function as a paper introduction, minimum of three sources, must include a works cited page. Section two, body of the paragraph, be well supported, six to eight sentence per paragraph with at least two in-text citations. Explore sides and analyze major arguments of each. Minimum of three sources must include required source types. Incorporate new sources into the works cited page. So for every essay section, you will have a works cited page. Section three, again, it's the body of the paper. Sorry, it's the body of the paper. And you'll have a minimum of two sources. And you incorporate the new sources into the works cited page. Your section four is like the body conclusion, as I mentioned. You start to wrap everything up. And you include the new sources into the works cited page. Note that the works cited page is not part of the page count. So essay structure, section one, introduction body, you merge into section two, you merge into section three, you merge into section four, and you conclude. And then finally, it's always good to revise, so you need to answer these sections, I'm sorry, answer these questions, and you will be given a specific assignment sheet for each section. So that is our integrated research essay. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to contact me. But thank you everyone, and I'm excited to work with you this semester on your integrated research essay.